Hi, Seth David here from the world famous Nerd Enterprises Incorporated, bringing to you another special screencast. This time we're talking about how to use QuickBooks Online to account for Upwork transactions. In this day and age, more and more it's becoming popular to use a lot of these freelancer sites to get simple things done that you need so you can stay focused on the more high level valuable things that you need to do to run your company. So if you need some graphic design work done or maybe you need some help with your online marketing or maybe you need some admin help, some virtual assistant help, people go to sites like Upwork in order to hire people to get these things done so they can increase their efficiency and again stay focused on what they really want to be spending their own time doing. The question, of course, is how do we account for this stuff? How do we account for Upwork transactions in QuickBooks Online? Now, the reason this is even a question is because in uh, Upwork will charge you one charge for it could be two to three transactions that all happen on the same day for different things. Now, some people will be content to just post that whole payment to outside services. But here's the problem with that. I don't have any details. I don't know who was paid. I don't know how much they were paid. I don't know really what they were paid for. Outside services can mean a lot of things. And using the scenario I just described, I might want to know more specifically how much I spent on graphic design, how much I spent on web design or marketing, or how much I spent on administrative work. So we may want to be able to record those details in QuickBooks Online. And here's how to do it. Let's have a look at my screen. Over here in QuickBooks Online, the first thing we'll want to do is create a clearing account. So we're going to go to our chart of accounts and I'll create a brand new account. The type is going to be a bank account and we're going to call it Upwork Clearing. Then essentially what we do is, here's a sheet that is kind of a sample of what you might download from Upwork. You can go onto the site and download a CSV file and see all your transactions. So this is an example of what that looks like uh, imported into Google Sheets, of course. So for each of these payments, you'll know you'll have a column for the freelancer, so you'll know who was paid. Now in this case, it's one for one. So you could theoretically just record the payment straight to that person, but the payment went to Upwork. And when you're reconciling, that can also create some confusion. You really want the payment out of your bank account to be consistent in terms of the payee with where the money was actually went. If you're ever auditing your books or looking back at them later, and I have a payment that's to Sam Slider, but really when I check the bank account, the payment went to Upwork, that can be confusing at best. So, what we want to do in order to have the details is record each invoice as a separate transaction or payment out of the Upwork clearing account. Then the payments, which would either go on our bank account or credit card account, get booked directly to that Upwork clearing. So everything zeroes out and everything balances and you can reconcile it perfectly. So let's see what this looks like real quick. I'll just use the simple example of the first one that we saw. If I go into my register for Upwork clearing and then I'll create a new transaction. Let's just record a check. Okay, and again, I want all the details. I want the payee in there. So I'm going to copy and paste his name. First time I pay him, I'll need to set him up as a vendor. Right, and this might be for marketing. Okay, we'll set up the expense. For the detail type, we can call it advertising and promotional. Marketing fits into that pretty well. And what did we pay him? We paid him $400. Okay, and then we'll date that back to uh, January, I think it was 16th, something like that, right? January 4th. And save and close. And of course, now I need to go find the transaction because I forgot to uh, change the bank account on that. So let's do a quick search for $400. And there he is. And remember, this is important. The payment doesn't come out of your checking. <clears throat> it comes out of the Upwork clearing account. Now let's go to the chart of accounts. And we can see the Upwork clearing shows the negative 400. Now we get the payment. And the payment went on our credit card, right? So. Whether it goes on the credit card or it comes out of the bank account, essentially it's going to be the same thing. I'll record an expense 
and let's just say it came out of the bank account. If it came out of the, off the credit card, the only difference is that's the account that's going to go here, is your credit card. Now the pay though is Upwork, right? Because this is the payment actually going to Upwork and the account is simply going to be Upwork clearing. And save and close. And now you can see very clearly how the Upwork clearing uh, clears out, right? And then, you know, theoretically this would have happened sometime later. What was the date of the payment? Actually, in this case, it was the same day. They invoiced and charged us on the same day. So that works out perfectly. So this is a real easy example, but you can see where there might be days where, for example, here, I got several invoices on the same day. In this case, I got two on January 18th, and then they took the payment out. So done this way, I would record each of these as a separate payment out of the Upwork clearing. And then, of course, I record the payment that zeroes it out. And occasionally, you'll find there might be a little bit of an overlap in terms of the balance due and you know the invoices that have come through and the payments. This is especially important, by the way, where this activity might cross over the end of one month and go into the next. And I encountered this with a client of mine last year where we really needed to normalize the data. There were investors involved and we needed to show the expenses in the right period, which by the way is another reason for doing this because we wanted to show, initially I was doing a lump sum for the entire month by category. And we realized that didn't always work because the payments didn't come out exactly that way. So that's another reason is what's called matching in accounting where we match up expenses in the right period so that we truly look at what did it cost us to do business that particular month. So that's another reason for entering each of these individually with their own respective transaction dates because sometimes the payment might come through a day or two after. And again, especially if that crosses over the end of the month, that can really throw us off. That, my friends, is how to use QuickBooks Online to account for Upwork transactions. As always, if you have any questions, concerns, comments, or feedback, let me know. I can't wait to get your comments on my blog post. Don't forget to subscribe to the YouTube channel, and we'll get back to you very quickly with answers to your questions, concerns, comments, and or feedback. As always, I hope you're having an absolutely fantastic day, and I look forward to seeing you on the web.